Hi, my name is Al Green. Not that one, but the, uh, the struggling guy who was in the music industry for years trying to sell talent and songs to agents. The agents befriended me and taught me techniques that I want to pass on to you through my program, which is called You Can Talk, You Can Sell. Anyone who has ever taken this program has excelled in selling and either risen to the top of their company, their team, or the top of their field. It's called You Can Talk, You Can Sell, and you can get it right here. Somebody once asked me, how do you maintain a positive, uplifting attitude when you're having a day of negativity? And it's like this. We all have bad days. Things happen. Maybe you get a flat tire or maybe something happens where you're supposed to pay a bill and you get reamed out by a credit company or a landlord or a boss for not hitting your numbers. And how do you recover from that? It's a very simple thing. As salespeople, we have to be, as they say, like living like water off of a duck's back. We just shake it off. We all have bad days. So how do we recover when we have to work? We have to be in front of people and we have to show a positive attitude. And it has to do with, first of all, affirming your own positive attitude that is number one to you because the way that you come across to people is how they are going to react to you. And if you are too passive, remember the art of listening is letting the other person talk and paying attention to what they're saying and making affirmations to them. You give them the micro yeses that you're agreeing with them and listening to them. Listening doesn't mean you just be silent until you think it's your turn to talk. That's not the idea. As salespeople, we have a tendency to talk too much as it is. So listening is based on taking in the words that your prospect is saying. Let it go in here and process through here and keep this part, keep your mouth quiet. And it's not like you're just waiting for your turn to talk. You're paying attention to them. And if you have to say something, say it in agreement with them. Even if they are in diametrically opposition to whatever it is that you believe. And in these days of political unrest, and everybody in the country is arguing over this, that, and the other policy, and, and who's in charge, and who the politicians are, it's time to hold your opinion to yourself, because it's not going to do you any good if your customer senses that you are against them. So what you have to be is you have to be kind of a camouflage expert. You have to blend in. Blending in is very easy to do. Now, years ago, I ran into a situation where I had to blend in to a group of people that I was selling to who basically had a philosophy that I was opposing to at the time. And it didn't have anything to do with political stances or preferences. It had to do with the fact that they were talking and they were using language that I am not allowed to, to use. A discussion about language came up with a group of mine recently where we talked about what words can you use with another person? If we all use some of the street language that we picked up, that might not work in a professional environment, even if the other person uses that language. That's not something that you do. You maintain your profile of being a professional at all times. And being a professional at all times is very, very simple. You pay attention to the other prospect. You are not the person who has to matter here. Your prospect is. Why? Because if they buy from you, they're paying your way. They're writing that check to make sure that you make a living. And they're buying into you. They're not just buying into your company because you're representing your company. You, the, you are the goodwill ambassador of your company or your product, whatever it is that you're selling. If you've created the project, the product or the project for them, then you have to be the ambassador of it. Taking the time to consider what your customer wants 
is not based on what you want them to know. It's based on what they want to know. So you always got to remember to put yourself aside. We do it all the time. It's so easy to do. You just realize whoever's writing the check, that's the person that needs the attention. Because I'll tell you what, it's very simple. If you don't want to give them the attention, you don't have to take their money. And if you're selling them something that they can use, and you're going to be supportive, possibly keep them as a customer and sell more to them in the future, or upgrade them to a better product or a higher service, then you might want to pay attention to the fact that that person needs to feel important because everybody is walking around with a sign on their forehead that basically says, I'm important, I want to be important, notice me, pay attention to me. Everybody wants that. And, and you want to be the person that plays into that. I know it might sound like it's a game, but in reality, what do you care if it's a game if it gets you the desired results? So how do you stay positive? You remember when you go in to remember the philosophy that you're doing in order to make a good impression and get the customer's attention. Because if you can get them to pay attention to you, then you've got a person who's going to buy from you. If they're giving you their attention, they're already on the way to buying. They're just waiting to hear when to say yes or how to say it. Now, persuasion is not what we do. We inform people. That's not being persuasive. A lot of people think as a, as a salesman, you have to do a lot of fast talking and you got to talk like this and say, and by the way, we've got this feature, we got that. No, 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 it's not like that at all. What we have to do is slow down, explain very carefully and professionally what it is we want the customer to know. I want you to know that not only will my company stand behind you with a toll-free number that you can call 24 hours a day, but you can call me seven days a week and I don't care when it is you call. I get calls from my kids and my family anyway. So if, what difference does it make if you need some help? Just give me a call. And I can't tell you how many times people have called me at 9.30 at night and said, I'm really sorry to bother you. I can't believe you'd be willing to talk at this hour. And I'd say, hey, it's only 9.30. I stay up late. What's, what's the big deal? What can I do for you? And if that keeps a customer and allows me to make a sale, who cares? I'm not so egotistical that I can't give somebody my time who's asking for it when they're paying my bills. That's called gratitude. You have to show gratitude to everybody who is your customer. And how do you do that? There's so many ways. Some people like to send gifts. Some people like to bring donuts and coffee. However you want to do it, that's up to you. And your company has guidelines. And if you are an independent person selling your own product or your own service, then you have your own guidelines that you can set. You're free to set those guidelines. So why not set them? You and I are on the same team. We're looking for the same results. I'm going to lead the way because I have worked with so many professional people and I have picked their brains until they have nothing more to offer. And then I go back and I find out what their latest trends are. What is it they're doing? And if it's about pricing, how do you handle pricing? I would ask them. If it's not about pricing, it's about service. How do you handle service? What is the way that you handle it? And I find out that these professionals that are making the big bucks, that are the number one in the company or the number two in the company, those people are taking a completely different tact and they're keeping track of their customers and they're always staying on top of what's the next trend that's coming along. For a lot of years, there were not people that were doing things like emails and they were doing things like advertising. They were just existing and going door to door. And there was a time years ago when I was going door to door and there was a, a news article that said there was somebody posing from my company to get into people's houses. So I was questioned as to who I was. I had my badge, I had my business cards, and I had people that were still questioning if I was legitimate. And that happens. And I just said, what can I do for you to prove who I am? And basically, yes, I've been rejected. I was told, get off my property. And I just turn around and walk away. No more to be said. Just walk away. I'd say, you can call the company and ask who I am. And that's okay. You're going to get skeptical people. You're going to get people who need, want, and have the money of what you're selling, and they're not going to buy anyway. That is going to happen. Being a professional means that if you go back to those people, 
which you can do. There is no problem. Fortune is in the follow-up, and you can follow up all you like. And in many cases, if you're a true pro, you can say, I wanted to make sure I follow up with you so that you know that I'm still here and I'm working on your case, whatever it is. Now, these are, th these are things you're going to learn in the six-figure selling system. So I want you to join me, and I will look forward to seeing you there.